Roy Jones Jr. here with Pro Boxing Fans. Roy, your man come out victorious after the fifth round, his opponent pulled out on the stool. Just give me your assessment, initial assessment of the performance. It was a good, I think he got an eight because like, yeah, everything we wanted him to do, he made the adjustments we were supposed to make. We made adjustments just in case anything showed up. I was in the last two weeks really. And uh, those adjustments we made, he adapted to him well and he used them well tonight. So I would bet we had extra time together to make those adjustments because had the guy showed up two weeks ago in South South Park, it might have been a little bit more difficult for we to beat him, but it been a little bit more difficult. We'd have to take more shots. Yeah. Because we had two weeks, mm. give us a chance to make a few more adjustments, and we didn't have to take a few shots. I don't think Chris got hit maybe once or twice. Oh, were you actually happy that he turned southpaw? Even Chris said in that interview, we did a huddle, and he said, listen, we weren't expecting him to be southpaw. But were you, are you happy now that he, is, he no, did I turn southpaw? I am, because it gave Chris some more to think about. Yeah. It gave us a chance to work our mind more and make work on making adjustments on the fly. So the question I've got to ask is when a trainer and a new fighter get together, it normally takes them a good couple of fights. How far is Chris away from being that fighter that you want him to be? He's 90% there already. 90% well. Because he stayed with me for a year and a half during the COVID uh, lockdown. So he was there for a year and, and some months then. I haven't seen him since his last fight and he still picked it right back up this time. And we had another month together, that's all I needed to refresh him. So now, knowing that I can ask something of him in a couple of days and he do it right away, just a dream coming true for a trainer. Listen, I spoke to you before, and we only spoke about Chris getting a world title shot, and there's talks of a, of a fight, but how much would it mean to you, somebody who's been with Chris for the last 19 months or however long it's been, that he fights maybe in the States under the big lights in Vegas? How, how much of a motivation would that be for yourself and for Chris? No, it's not motivation for me. I don't care where he get that. As long as he wins it, I don't care where he's at. It could be in France, it could be here, it could be in Cuba, it could be in Dubai, it could be anywhere. In the United States, I don't care. Wherever the fans want to see it, wherever the most fans want to show support, which right now is over here, yeah. then that's where it's cool at. So I ain't really worried about where it's at. It's not, that's not my thing. Whatever he wants, I'm his trainer. I'm here to help make him better. Where he do it at, where he want it, that's up to him. That's not my call because I did what I want to do where I was when it was my turn. Now it's his turn. 100%. And whatever he want to do with it, I'm cool with it. How much in your past experiences uh, is it important to bond with your fighter? You, obviously, you were a great fighter in your time. You, you've had your trainers, but having that relationship with the trainer, how hard is it actually to, to make sure that you know you have that relationship where you can both excel to the maximum? You have to have a good relationship. If you don't have a good relationship with your trainer, it's not a good thing to go into. It's like having a wife. If you and your wife are not getting along, how hey, y'all have a good family, a happy family? Mm. Y'all don't get along. So if you and the fighter not getting along, you should y'all should separate. So it's not like y'all married for real, but in the, as the relationship goes, there has to be a mutual respect. And if not a mutual respect, then it's not gonna work. He actually said to me, you know, I asked him about COVID, and he goes, the benefit I take from COVID is that I got the best coach in the world. That's what he said to me. And I appreciate that. That's and I got the best student in the world. It must be a nice thing to hear, though, when you hear. It is. It is. It's, uh, it's a nice thing to hear and see how much he appreciates me because he shows me his appreciation. Mm -hmm. By trying things that I teach you. Mm. That's a hell of a way to show appreciation. It don't get no better than that. If I tell you to walk out there and kick that kick that bush and some bees gonna come out and run, and you go out there and kick that bush and run and no bees gonna come out, that's a that means more to me than anything anybody can tell me. Mm. Because you're listening to what I tell you to do. Interesting. I wanna quickly pick your brain on something else. A lot of talk about high Fury in the last week. As a fighter who's been in the ring with different styles throughout the years and entertained the crowd. How do you beat somebody like Tyson Fury? He's just awkward, big, strong, small. Very tough. If you don't knock him out, you're in trouble. So if you can't knock him out, you can forget it because he's a tough cookie to swallow. <laughs> uh, Roy Jones, it's always a pleasure. Thank you so much.